to everybody. On behalf of Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority, Land Revenue and Disaster Management Department, Government of Sikkim, I would like to welcome our guest of honor, Honorable Speaker Sri L. Das, our chief guest for today, Honorable Minister for Land Revenue and Disaster Management, Education Department, and Law and Parliamentary Affairs Department, Sri Kunga Nima Lepcha, guest of honor, Retired Lieutenant General Sri N. C. Marwa, Honorable Minister for Forests, Science and Technology, and Mines and Geology, Honorable MLAs, Political Advisor to HCM, Respected Mayor, Zilla Adekshas, Additional Chief Secretaries, Secretaries, Heads of Departments, Senior Officers, Distinguished Resource Persons, Representatives of NDRF, SDRF, Members of Press and Media, Participants, and each and everyone present here today. After the massive earthquake of 18 September 2011, every year this day is observed as Disaster Risk Reduction Day in the state under various themes to highlight significant issues pertaining to disaster risk reduction and to assess preparedness. This year, SSDMA is conducting a two-day workshop on the theme Challenges on Disaster Risk Reduction of Hill Towns in collaboration with National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, Government of Sikkim. I would now like to request the State Relief Commissioner Home Secretary, Land Revenue and Disaster Management Department, to welcome the distinguished guests on the dais by offering khadas and bouquets.
are imperative for both disaster, risk reduction, and climate change adaptation. This year, the occasion is being observed with two days of workshop on the theme, the challenges on disaster risk reduction of hill towns, in collaboration with the National Disaster Management Authority of Government of India. On behalf of the Department of Land Revenue and Disaster Management Team of the State Government, I am honored to extend my warm welcome to the Honorable Minister of Land Revenue, Disaster Management Department, Department of Education, Law, Legal Affairs, Sport and, Sport and Youth Affairs Department, Sri Kumar Nima as the Chief Guest, and respected Lieutenant General Vinci Marwa, Honorable Member of the National Disaster Management Authority as the guest of honor. And I also would like to extend my warm welcome to the Honorable Minister of Forest, Environment, Science and Technology, Mines and Geology for his presence here today. And to the area Emily of Renault Constituency, political advisors, economic advisors to the state government. And I also extend my warm welcome to the Mayor of Gangtok Municipality, Upadakshas, Zilladakshas, who are present here amongst us. And I also extend my warm welcome to the Director General of Police, additional Chief Secretaries, Principal Secretaries, Head of the Departments, Senior Technical Members of the Nine Departments of the State Government, District Collectors of our four districts, East, South, North, and West District. <coughs> He, uh, District Collector uh, and his team have been unable to attend because of the, the situation in West District at present, which is suffering from 
uh, tremendous uh, have all created the landslide in Chong, Chong village under Luxem subdivision where they are working tirelessly with the NDRF team for evacuation and I'm excited to report that about 100 families have been displaced at this present moment. And I would also like to extend my warm welcome to all the DPOs of all the four districts, civil defense members who have always supported us in our uh, task dealing to deal with disaster management. I'd also like to extend my warm welcome off the dais, on the dais. Sri Anil Sinha, former Vice Chairman of Bihar State Disaster Management Authority, Professor V.K. Sharma, who is the Chair, Vice Chairman of the Second State Disaster Management Authority, Professor Ravi Sinha, Senior Professor from the Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai. And off the dais, I would also like to extend my warm welcome to uh, experts and who have made the, uh, taken the trouble to come to Sikkim to share the experience as resource persons. I may not be able to uh, name all of them, but few senior uh, resource persons here I refer my personal uh, welcome and address to Sri B.D. Patil, former Chief Geologist of the National Hydroelectric Project Cooperation, Sri R. Srinivas, Town and Country Planning Officer from the Ministry of Urban Affairs, Sri Sanjay Vasist, Director from the Climate Action Network of South Asia, Professor Manzu Kumar Hazariva, Director of Geoinformatics, Asian Institute of Technology, Bangkok, Sri Johnny Rongmoy, Officer in Special Duty from Nagaland State Disaster Management Authority, Sri L.T. Darlong, Additional Secretary, Government of Tripura. And my uh, warm welcome will not be complete without extending my heartiest uh, appreciation and cooperation, which has always been extended by the central government organizations, such as the uh, Central Water Commission representatives, Indian Meteorological Department, Na uh, National Hydro Project Corporations, NDRF, SDRF, and my state, uh, uh, second state disaster management team under the additional director, Mr. Kanal. And I'd also like to uh, give my appreciation in my welcome address to the Department of IPR and to the social media, print media, and uh, um, all the media persons who are present here today. And my, our special appreciation to Deorani School Girls High School for the beautiful rendition and their own composition of the song presented to us here. I would like to give a little brief uh, note on the workshop which will happen in case of technical session. The concept of disaster resilience is a relatively new concept in India requiring specific technical know-how and data for cities to draw up their resilience plans. It also needs awareness generation to be built among civil society and people to foster interest and support. The hilly areas are presently faced with the dilemma of maintaining a balance between development and environmental conservation. In the hilly areas, the land available for undertaking various development Till initiatives is severely limited and its utilization is further restricted by stringent environmental regulation as also the fragile terrain characteristics. Under these mutually conflicting forces of development and fragile environmental environment, the urban centers of the hills are witnessing unplanned and lopsided growth whereby Proliferation of hastily built infrastructures with scant regard to safety measures is becoming common and a risk and a vulnerability to disaster. This trend, if not allow, if allowed to continue unabated, is sure to result in a situation that might threaten the very existence of many hill habitations. The hill towns have been experiencing a very high pressure for development due to rapid urbanization, 
increasing economic activities, employment opportunities, such as increased tourist influx from the last few decades in Sikkim. As a result, tremendous development, both residential and commercial, has taken place in these environmentally fragile hill towns, which has drastically changed the overall impact and conflict between man, environment, and development. Over the years, Sikkim Disaster Management Authority is tirelessly working towards mainstreaming disaster risk reduction in developmental planning process. Some of the works undertaken are, I would like to name them, is number one, hazard risk vulnerability analysis in the four major towns of Sikkim, Gangtok, Indi, Gezi, Mangan, and Namchi. Two, architects, town planners, engineers, as well as masons have been trained in safe construction practices in Gangtok and in IITs. Three, and now we are in the process of installing in other landslide prone areas in partnership with funding agencies and central government organizations. Completed in schools under the Amrul City project. Six, rapid visual survey for major schools and hospitals was successfully completed. Seven, the state government is committed in implementation of the Sandar framework for disaster risk reduction to be completed by 2030, for which an MOU has been signed by the state local department. The need to strengthen and upgrade our effort is relentlessly being reviewed periodically. I take this opportunity to bring forth a few pointers amongst this August gathering of experts and practitioners in context to building residents in the hill areas. Current future risk and assets for long-term sustainability. Two, hazard resistant planning, including risk resist sensitive land use planning. Three, selective strengthening and retrofitting of existing infrastructure to reduce vulnerability. Four, awareness and preparedness has to be a regular feature at various levels. Five, regulation and implementation has to be strengthened and strictly implemented. Six, capacity building and emergency response has to be well coordinated, always. Seven, mainstreaming the concept of disaster resilience planning into master plan is much needed. Disaster risk reduction is not one man's job alone as we all need to come together and to work in collaboration. I take this advantage and I urge all of you to take advantage of these two days of technical sessions to draw up an action plan for each of the hill areas across Pan Himalayan region to make it a disaster resilient area. Thank you very much. And now we have amongst us this, the Honorable Speaker, Sri El Pitas of the Sikkim Legislative Assembly, who will who is the guest of honor for today's inaugural session. And so I would like to welcome him. Thank you. 
Due to high intensity rainfall, especially during monsoon, incidences of landslides and flash flood cause loss of life and property. Again, Sikkim being located under zone 4 and 5 on the seismic map. Earthquake tremors occur here and cause heavy loss of life and property at times. There are other hazards that have become active due to global warming and climate change impacts. The erratic rainfall pattern with cloud bursts Increasing incidences of thunder, lightning and hailstorms are on the rise and has been causing loss of life and property. Cases of forest and household fire incidences are on rise. The hill towns and other settlements located along the river line have threat for flash flood incidences. The rainfall of September, October 1968 did cause heavy damage through landslides and flash flood. In terms of earthquake, the Valentine Day earthquake of 14 February 2006 and of 18 September 2011 did cause heavy loss of lives and properties. The 6.8 magnitude earthquake of 18 September 2011 damaged total of 34,159 infrastructures and loss of 63 human lives apart from 710 injuries in Sikkim alone. The 1934 Bihar-Nepal earthquake of 8.3 magnitude, also known as Napesargobhijaru, caused heavy loss of lives and properties in the region and in Sikkim. The flash floods of the year 2012 had 47 human casualties in Sikkim alone, apart from infrastructural and other property loss. With the scenario of increasing vulnerability to disasters, there has been conflict between climate change impact, vulnerability, disaster with the development programs. We cannot stop the development, but can do preparedness for climate change impact through mitigation and adaptation, and go for mitigation to vulnerability turning out of various hazards. We are to go for sustainable development right from choosing suitable land for infrastructure and with seasonally resilient features. For strengthening critical and lifeline buildings and for new construction with the principle of build back better as mandated by Sendai resolution for disaster risk reduction. In Sikkim, to discuss and to check the preparedness of state for hazards and disasters, State Disaster Risk Reduction Day is observed every year on 18 September on various themes to find solutions for safety from threat of different types of vulnerabilities. In the present scenario, hazards intensified by the climate change impact are becoming more vulnerable and creating threat for upcoming disaster events. The increasing size of glacial lakes with weak moraine dam towards the mount, frequent cases of forest and household fire, thunder, hailstorms and lightning, cases of cloud bursts and flash flood, etc. have become matters of worry. If glacial lake outburst flood is to happen due to damage of moraine dam, then there would be high risk on land, properties and infrastructures located along downstream, as most of the industries are located along the river belt. With the increasing vulnerabilities through hazards and the expected loss of life and economy, 
Government of India promulgated Disaster Management Act 2005 and framed National Disaster Management Authority with Prime Minister as its chairman for responding and reducing the disaster risk. Likewise, State Disaster Management Authority at state level is formed with the Chief Minister as Chairman and District Disaster Management Authority at districts with the District Collector as its Chairman. Disaster Management Activities was adopting Hyogo Framework from the year 2005 to 2015 which was more response centric but now the United Nations countries have resolved to go Sendai framework from 2015 to 2030, which has to work right from preparedness from community level to rehabilitation and with the theme of build back better. The second state disaster management authority, SSDLA, has been formed in the state with Honorable Chief Minister as its chairman and other members. The SSDMA also follows Sendai Framework for Disaster Preparedness and Management. State Executive Committee with the Chief Secretary as its Chairman takes up the Executive Program of the State Authority. Following the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, the expected outcome by adopting priorities of action and goals would be the sustainable reduction of disaster risk and losses in lives, livelihoods and health and in the economic, physical, social, cultural and business communities and countries and environmental assets of persons, business communities and countries. The direct target would be substantially reduction of global mortality rate, number of affected people reduced direct disaster economy loss in relation to global GDP, reduce damage to the critical infrastructures, enhance international cooperation for implementation of framework, and substantially increase and availability of and access of multi-hazard early warning systems and disaster risk information to the people by the year 2030. The National Disaster Management Authority or NDMA at the center has been the backbone for accelerating the state program. Under Apada Mitra program, we are training community volunteers for flood management we are provided with financial and technical support for demonstrative landslide mitigation program for Mangan Town, expert support for implementation of Sendai Framework and many others. While following the Sendai Framework, Honorable Prime Minister has brought out Prime Minister's 10-point agenda for disaster risk reduction to be followed up which has broad topics as all the development sectors must imbibe the principles of disaster risk reduction, work towards risk coverage for all, encourage greater involvement and leadership of women in disaster risk management, invest in risk mapping globally, leverage technology to enhance the efficiency of our disaster risk management efforts, develop a network of universities to work on disaster issues, utilize the opportunities provided by social media and mobile technologies, build on local capacities and initiatives, ensure that the opportunity to learn from a disaster is not wasted, bring about greater cohesion in international response to disasters. The Second State Disaster Management Authority with the District Disaster Management Authorities at Mangan, Namchi, Gyeongtok and Gaisen is working for disaster risk reduction in the state. The Honorable Minister for Land Revenue and Disaster Management, accompanied by State Relief Commissioner and SSDMA team members, recently held meetings with international and national organizations at New Delhi 
for their support towards disaster risk reduction in the state. Various activities for disaster risk reduction are undertaken by SSDMA by involvement of stakeholder departments and organizations. periods by which loss of life and properties occur due to incessant rainfall and landslides. Team of National Disaster Response Force and State Disaster Response Force is also put on alert to move to the disaster site during emergency. Various response activities are taken up whether be distribution of ex gratia payments or rehabilitation activities. This year, more than 1,000 yards died due to heavy snowfall and starvation, and prompt action was taken up for ex gratia payments to the owners. However, the loss of the animals could not be avoided. SSDMA, in collaboration with Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitham Kerala, has established a landslide early warning system at Chandmari Gangtok, from where real time data is transferred to the university at Kerala and analyzed, and information is transmitted to SSDMA. for establishment of more landslides and GLOF early warning systems. SSDMA under SDC UNDP program undertook program for mitigation of South Donut Lake for threat of GLOF in northwestern part of Sikkim by draining excess water through siphoning through 8 inch diameter HDPE pipes along with capacity building and awareness programs to the stakeholders and to community. There are 10 other vulnerable glacier lakes identified for having threat to GLOF. The government has formed multidisciplinary committee for ground study of these lakes to recommend for mitigation. Disaster risk reduction include mock treats for preparedness for various hazards by involvement of stakeholders and community. Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority is putting all its effort to work for disaster risk reduction in the state with active participation from various stakeholders, departments, organizations, and the communities and have ambition of being model state in the country for disaster risk reduction. Disaster management plans are prepared and reviewed at state and district levels and evacuation plans are prepared for various offices. Apart from that, capacity buildings and awareness programs and mock exercises are held at schools, hospitals, vulnerable populated locations. The community volunteers of selected Gram Panchayat units are involved in the preparation of vulnerability and resource map of their Gram Panchayat units through participatory rural appraisal for disaster risk reduction. We have plans for training their rescue and other teams and provide control rooms and later make them trainers of trainees for neighboring Gram Panchayat units by following the priorities and goals as laid down in Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. A very warm good morning to all the dignitaries on the dais, respected, all the ministers and ladies and gentlemen present out here. 
This year, the theme for the State Disaster Risk Reduction Day is Challenges of Disaster Risk Reduction in Hill Towns. I understand the theme is about ways to reduce the disaster risk in hilly areas. I am Abhishek Chetri, an SS volunteer, Government Senior Secondary School teacher, and have attended and completed the training of Apada Mitra and Flood Management at Shilom in the year 2018, where I learned and experienced my many, many techniques related to flood management. Our state, Sikkim, faces many hazards like earthquakes, landslides, cloud rust, floods, and in recent years, the threat of glacier lake or rust flood has increased. Hazards have potential to become a disaster, so we need, we need to be aware. Advancement of technology in today's world can help us minimize disaster risk in real time. My suggestion to this forum made, of, made up of experts in the field are number one, to create trained volunteers in schools. Number two, to use social media to aware the youth and motivate to be a part of volunteering. Number three, we need more youth to be trained. My experience in Shillong has made me confident and focused to come forward and help people in distress. I feel fortunate to be a part of this training program and would like to thank my school and Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority for giving me this great opportunity. Lastly, I would like to conclude by saying that preparation is key to survive disaster. So let us join hands to prepare ourselves to make Sikkim a disaster resilient state. Thank you and Jai Hind. Good morning everyone. Honorable uh, Minister Sri Kumani uh, Malakja, Honorable Speaker Sri L.B. Das, Honorable Ministers of various departments, respected uh, secretaries of all departments, additional secretaries of all departments, fellow stakeholders and volunteers and students. As someone who has been exposed to various uh, natural disaster and management, I have always felt like every discussion and meetings held on this topic is extremely useful and never enough. We have to be open to new innovative concepts of minimizing the impact of natural disaster and taking sensible measures when disaster strikes. Helping, Sikkim Helping Hand started during 18 September 2011 earthquake where uh, I was the coordinator from uh, Sikkim, uh, from uh, Living Help uh, Helipad where we had to send uh, uh, relief materials uh, towards North Sikkim uh, with the help of Indian Army. During that rescue operation there was a lot of uh, communication gap between the forest department and the army as we all know that army people during the such uh, situations they are very rule bound. I don't know in I I, I don't know in uh, cases like this. They should be a little bit lenient towards uh, some rules. We can understand that uh, those areas are, are all different, uh, different or army area. But even we have to think about those people whoever has been stuck in those areas. I I feel I feel like that. The second rescue we did was in Longo. The third rescue we did was in Nepal earthquake where we didn't have to face any uh, problem because those areas were not uh, under any army or any defense area. The recent uh, rescue operation uh, from uh, Travel Agent Association of Sikkim task we did was in Lachin with the help of uh, administration from uh, uh, DC North, uh, Army, Indian Army, uh, ITBP people, Lachin uh, uh, people, Lachin public. During that rescue operation as well as uh, by uh, that time uh, Mr. Raj Yadav was our DC. What happened was once when all the tourists started coming to the first uh, relief camp, what happened was uh, we started putting all our uh, tourists, there were around 50 of them inside that army truck. When I went to the driver and I, I told him that now he has to leave because by 4 o'clock we had to leave that uh, area because otherwise even the whoever was there to help them, even we, we would have got stuck in that way. What happened was that army, uh, army driver, he came and he said, ma'am, we can take only uh, till one side bridge. But the bridge was around uh, uh, 15 to uh, 10 minutes from the first camp. Then I, I asked him, why? He said, ma'am, in, in one area, we have to cross ITBP area. We need clearance from ITBP as well. 
And I, I, I went and I spoke with our uh, DC, uh, not Mr. Yadro, uh, and he also started explaining to them, see, now this is whatever rescue we are doing, we have to forget about everything. As he was there on behalf of our state government, even the, the army, in an army was not, you know, was not listening to us. We wasted our one to two hours in uh, who's going to take our, our uh, uh, tourists, who's going to uh, reach them till Chungtang. After discussing, uh, after discussing with them, I think it took us around one to two hours for for our tourists to get evacuated from that uh, area. We wasted our energy, we wasted our time out there. Uh, tourists started getting angry with us because they were already stuck in Lachen for uh, two to three days. So I, I, I feel as a as a uh, stakeholder or as a volunteers uh, from Sikkim Helping Hand, they should be able to give little bit of space to the state government or to the volunteers because we are there. If our DC was there, then he is the main person from the state government, right? I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know. I felt like that because no doubt they are helping us a lot. Without Indian Army, we can't do anything. We know that. And uh, even during September 18 earthquake, also the same thing has happened between uh, Indian Army and the Air Force regarding the aircraft. So, and, uh, and also I feel uh, the department should train the drivers as well, because they are the first rescuer. Whenever we get stuck in uh, uh, Natura and uh, Changulik, because it's, a, uh, it's very nearby to Gantok, and we have a lot of uh, uh, places where the, uh, the tourists and all, they can stay. But towards, uh, when they get stuck towards in Lachin and Lachung, there are few places where there is no network. And we should train our drivers. We, we have to sanitize them, tell them that you have to carry spade or any, any kodalo or whatever, you have to carry gumboots. Because there are few luxury vehicle drivers who are trained. Because we have, uh, in my company, I have around 10 drivers. We have trained them. They carry all spades, they carry gumboots because they are the one. And also, uh, I wanted to talk about this uh, bridge. Lachen has been cut off from um, the uh, from the uh, Gant uh, from Gantok. It's been four months. The bridge has not been installed till now. We are getting a lot of bookings uh, for this uh, puja season. I don't know who's 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 answerable to us. We've been asking so many people when 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 is Lachen Lachen is going to open? Even if we have to cross through that um, uh, wherever that army ammunition area is there, please kindly be a little bit lenient about the timing. The tourist vehicle can't reach that uh, uh, that army ammunition area by four o'clock. It's impossible. If you ask the driver to reach that area by 4 o'clock, again, there will be another issue of accidents. So kindly please, uh, I can see a lot of uh, uh, people have come from army area. Uh, army, please kindly please be a little bit lenient towards uh, such uh, situations. And kindly please look into the matter of uh, restoring the bridge of Nachin. Lastly, uh, I, I would like to thank uh, Land Revenue Department for giving a significant platform and to officials of NDMA, UNDP, UNICEF, SDC, and Northeast stakeholder for their presence and time to install the spirit of preparedness and to uh, be a sense of belonging and responsibility towards our land and our homes. Thank you so much. I now call upon Mr. Bhim Subba, Second State Disaster Management Department and Revenue and Disaster Management Department, is pleased to compare the certificate of accommodation to Mr. Bhim Subba, quick response team under the District Administrative Centre, East District, in recognition of his valuable contribution to disaster management activities in Sikkim for more than 17 years under the East District Administration. Mr. Roshan Rai, Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority, Land 
and we are the disaster management department is pleased to confer the certificate of commendation to Roshan Rai Quick Response Team under District Administrative Center East District in recognition of the valuable contribution to disaster management activities in East District for more than 17 years under the East District Administration. Mr. Buddha Raj Subha, the Sikkim State Disaster Management Dep uh, Authority, Land Revenue and Disaster Management Department is pleased to confirm the department is pleased to confirm the certificate of commendation to Subdivisional Magistrate Chung Tang and his team for working tirelessly in ensuring the safety and safe passage plan of 427 tourists who were stranded due to landslides in June 2019 along the North Sikkim Highway. So, Officer Chung Tang, the Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority Land Revenue and Disaster Management Department is pleased to confer the certificate of commendation to Subdivision Police Officer Chung Tang and his team for working tirelessly in ensuring the safety and safe passage of 427 tourists who were stranded due to landslides on, in June 2019 along the Land Revenue and Disaster Management Department is pleased to confer the certificate of commendation to Lachin Kunsa for selflessly providing accommodation and food in Lachin to the stranded tourists due to several landslides in the month of June 2019. The ITBP 11 Battalion Egon Department is pleased to confer the certificate of commendation to ITBP 11 Battalion Egon providing vehicles for transport and medical facilities to the 427 tourists stranded in the landslide in June 2019 in North Sydney.
in welcoming each one of you to this beautiful uh, state, to this beautiful city, Gangtok. And we are grateful to you that you spare your valuable time and you are here with us. It's very heartening that uh, people from other part of the world and particularly from Asia, now they are coming. I remember uh, Dr. Dikshit came from Nepal a few years back. And this time also, there is one senior professor from Asian Institute of Technology. He is here with us and he will be sharing his experience. And he has shown his willingness to work in Sikkim and to help us uh, in science and technology and how this science and technology can be useful in disaster risk reduction. I received mail from Director Asian Disaster Risk Reduction Center, Kobe, ADRC. And ADRC was established in 1998 and since then I am very happy that uh, Mr. Anil Sinha who was there in the first meeting in Kobe. So Mr. Koji Suzuki, he has written and he has uh, showed his interest that I will be very happy to help government of Sikkim in your DRR program. And not only this, they are ready to share the technology, you know, the QZSS te technology, which is a space technology to disseminate early warning system in the area where there is no telecommunication or uh, information cannot be sent by any other means. So I think this is a unique technology which is developed and uh, Mr. Hazarika who is here from Bangkok, he will be talking on this. And uh, I'm grateful to uh, Dr. Suzuki that uh, he is willing uh, to assist us and uh, willing to give this technology to us. Not only this, I'm very happy that uh, uh, ANU in uh, uh, Australia, there are you know universities in Japan, they are willing to work with us and uh, it's a unique experience that uh, people are seeing that Sikkim, it's really working on the on DRR, on the agenda which is given by Sindai framework and uh, in this short film I think they set the tone and they gave, you know, very clearly that how we are proceeding, you know, in, in disaster risk reduction in this state. You know that 2011, there was an earthquake and uh, we suffered a lot. But I think government of Sikkim and people of Sikkim, they have taken it as an opportunity for right kind of development, for right kind of approach, for making our plans, you know, district level plans, state plan, and everything, so that we can reduce mortality. So that we can, and there is more focus on preparedness. And this is the reason that, and uh, I am grateful to NDMA, that NDMA provided us, you know, full support uh, in this process. And they are with us, you know, almost in each program of DR, DRR day, I am seeing that uh, NDMA presence is there and every, this is very motivating to us basically. Sikkim government, our approach is slightly different and which is liked, appreciated by NDMA and by other people in Asia and that approach is that we are reaching to the communities basically. With the help of UNDP, with the help of uh, our, uh, some donor agencies, with the efforts of the state government, we are going to train some more, more I mean, GPUs. And 16 GPUs we are making as model GPU, and they will be giving training to other GPUs. 
So I think in case we have district plan which is very robust or state plan which is very good, but unless and until the community is trained, unless and until the community uh, you know, can work with the government, we cannot achieve our goals. So this is one very big achievement, I would say, of this state. And many other states are following this, that they are going up to the community level. I will request, you know, my colleagues that go a step further. And from GPU, I think we should go to the family level plan. We should go up to the individual plan. Because nowadays, you might have seen that with climate change, the impact of disasters is increasing. New type of challenges are coming. You know, there is uh, thunder, lightning and all that. And unless and until we have individual preparedness, individual preparedness plan, what to do, what not to do, there is many, uh, you know, things we will have to uh, have for the family. So I think our next step will be that we will be having family level plan and individual plan. So, once we finish the, the community uh, you know, work, we will go ahead and we will do that. <coughs> Our school safety program is very impressive. And I am very glad that from Delhi, Save the Children, they have done some work for in, in Sikkim and in few schools. And I am so happy that these schools, they are appreciating their efforts. And DMA has given us, given us some guidelines, you know, for the school safety program. And I think we are doing it very successfully. The only thing is that we want to do it for the whole state. We don't want to say two schools in, in a district, or one school in a district. We want to take the whole state because all the kids, all the children, you know, they are the state, uh, you know, state property, I should say. So we cannot select you know, few schools and ignore others. Uh, but we have limited resources, but we are doing uh, in, in this direction. <clears throat> there is one very unique thing which you will see in Sikkim, and uh, the presence of Honorable Minister, you know, for forest, climate change, and environment, and Honorable Minister, you know, of Land Revenue, Disaster Management, MLAs, you know, City Mayor. I think the, the mainstreaming which we are talking about in disaster risk reduction, this you can see in Sikkim. All the departments, you know, you will see in the gathering that all the nodal persons from different departments, they are participating. And this is important. Because this is not possible only by Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority. Unless and until science and technology and climate change, other departments, you know, like education, departments like, you know, education, departments like rural development, I think in case we don't work together, we cannot achieve, uh, you know, complete disaster risk reduction uh, plan. And this you can see in Sikkim, that we are all are working together. And this is basically mainstreaming of DRR in this state. Science and technology. <clears throat> I think use of science and technology is very important. And uh, particularly in early warning system, in, and Amrita University, you know, they are here and they will be giving presentation. They have done some very good experimental work, uh, you know, for us. And we would like to uh, enhance, you know, this program further so that we can have more, uh, you know, places where we can have more data and uh, we can give warning or early warning, you know, in landslides because this is one of our major problems. Today's theme, you know, the uh, today's workshop we are doing on cities and towns and I think the keynote speaker today he is one of the uh, one person you know of international 
fame, I should say, in urban race and uh, so I think you will be listening, listening to him. But to my mind, Sikkim can be a model because we have uh, very few cities, we have very few, you know, towns. Our population is not that much. And in case we prepare an action plan, you know, for city risk or reducing urban risk or reducing risk, you know, for small towns and implement that, then this can be a modern state for others and others can learn from us uh, in this area. <clears throat> I will just mention about few things which we have done and uh, again appreciate you know, the effort of uh, UNDP and other organizations and particularly this Monarch Day program uh, which is a very success story uh, you know, you might be knowing that the lake was increased, you know, several times and uh, there was chance that uh, there may be bust and in case the lake bust, you can see that what will be the impact. But with the help of, uh, you know, effort of uh, several departments, with the help of Army, IDDP, everybody, uh, we could do that and uh, now there is a need that other lakes, you know, about 10 lakes are there which are having similar problems. So I think we will have to work on this and we have invited, you know, some people from uh, Delhi and they will be talking to us and I think they will prepare a holistic program so that we can work uh, in this area and you will be listening to them uh, in this. <coughs> Lastly, I will say that uh, uh, in every sector, I think uh, this state has done a remarkable job and when we are talking sustainable development, I think it is not possible uh, if we don't work, you know, in different sectors. Agriculture, you know that Sikkim is the organic state, the first organic state and we are proud of it that uh, our small farmers, you know, they could do that. The Dhara Vikas program, which we did, I think this is again a success story and which can be implemented in Himalaya because climate change will impact the whole Himalaya and will be affected more. You are seeing it, you know, since last so many years that the impact of climate change is obvious. Our villagers, they are suffering because of drinking water and all. I think Sikkim has given a model that how you can revive your dry spring, your dry lakes. And I think we will have to continue this kind of work, which is a model, you know, for others. Friends, I think it is a combined effort. And uh, there is a political will. And political will is very important. And uh, I am so glad that these dignitaries who are sitting on dais, they are here on this day. It, it shows their commitment, you know, for disaster risk reduction. The scientists who have come, you know, from not only from India but even from abroad, this shows their interest, you know, in this state of Sikkim. I once again welcome each one of you, and I wish that in two days. We will do something to prepare a sort of action plan or at least action points that what can be done in order to reduce urban risk and risk of the small towns in Himalayan area and particularly in Sikkim. I uh, once again you know, thank each one of you and wish that this, success, this conference or two days conference will be a great success and we will learn a lot from it. Thank you very much. And good morning to all of you. Honorable Minister, Land Revenue and Disaster Management, Shri Kumbhar Nima Lekshaji, Honorable Speaker, sir, Honorable Member, NDMA General Marwana, Special Relief Commissioner, Ambika Pradhanji, my old colleague and friend, 
And I should not hesitate to say that he is also my guru, Mr. B.K. Sharma. You are lucky to have him as the vice chairman, but he is the person who initiated disaster management in India. And I had been the Rift Commission in Bihar, but uh, when I also went to work for NCD, National Center for the Astronomy, and it was set up by him, then I literally started learning. I knew the Rift because I had been uh, the Rift Commission in Bihar, but I didn't know the Astronomy. That was also because those were the days of relief, you know. It is only when the UN started a global campaign, and the first campaign was International Decade for Natural Disaster Reductions. Now, from all these 90s. Now, that is when I got to work in NCDM, and that is when my learning started. So, thank you, Professor Vipa Sharma. Professor Ravi Sina has been a old, very eminent colleague, very, very eminent in his own right. I am happy that he is also here. I must congratulate all of you, you know, that 2011, I'll just speak of that. I was in this hall in 2012, on 18th of September. And as we finished in the evening, no, I think the 18th September 2011 earthquake had happened in the evening, 5.30, you know, quarter to 6, or something like that. And on the next year, 2012, in the evening, more or less the same time, there was another earthquake here. It literally commemorated and, you know, alerted everyone, reminded everyone here that, look, don't take me for granted. I can visit you anytime, regularly or irregularly. Now, talking of 18.9, you know, which is what you have put it as. Let me talk of the relationship between Sikkim and Bihar of 1890. I was then working as the vice chairman of Bihar State Jasmine Authority. On 1890, at the time of the earthquake, I was in a cinema hall. And then a huge shaking started. You see, 34th earthquake was mentioned in the film, which had impact. That was on the Bihar and Nepal border which affected Sikkim also. This earthquake in Sikkim affected Bihar also. I was in the cinema hall with four of my relations, two ladies and two gentlemen, all of them in mid-70s or late-70s. The moment it really shook, you know, and it was not just a wave which passed by, but it was there. Then the 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 gentleman sitting next to me just stood up, you know. He wanted to rush. But I had some orientation working in BSTM, I have worked in Japan, etc. So I held his hand very strong. And my, I couldn't speak, but I said, just be here. Right? I said, if you can remember, then remember God, you know, some mantras, etc. But no rush. But whole hall, you know, there was commotion, panic, people were themselves. Some people fell down also in that, that kind of a commotion. Some were injured to some extent. But we were safe, you see. Nothing much could be done. We were on fifth floor or something like that. And the best thing is to keep calm, calm you see. I think, you see, one, how you respond to a disaster is extremely important. And let me take you from 189 to 9.11. Convert it to 9.11. I am sure all of you know about 9.11. New York, Twin Towers, you see. More than 3,000 people, I suppose, died. Two towers were affected. In the tower which was second, affected second, you see. And there was a time difference of around 18 to 21 minutes between that, you see. There is a case study of a company called Morgan Stanley, which was published in the Time magazine. And even now, if you Google, I did it a few days back, because I have been teaching students in Jamia Media. There I mentioned, and I said, look, I don't have that copy of Time, but let me see. 
immediately. Google Baba is so kind. It gives you, you ask for anything, it gives you, you know, more than what you want. You see. But it is there, you can just get down to that list. Now, Martin Stanley is a global financial company. So they were in three floors of the second tower. And they had their own around 3,000 employees in those three floors. Practically all of them, there are two versions which were presented in, in Time magazine. You see, according to one, seven people survived. According to the second version, 13 people survived. No, sorry, seven people died and 13 people died, according to two versions. All others, which means 2,990 2, odd people, they all <coughs> came out safely. You see. How? That is because they responded in an appropriate manner. And I'll talk of that a little later. Now, who were these seven people or thirteen people who were killed? There were six were visitors, casual visitors on that day. And the last man was, unfortunately, the guy who was in charge of their security called Rick Rescore Lives. He was a guy from a military security background. And he would get into these training programs and uh, rehearsals, etc. People will criticize him like anything. They'll say, you don't realize your background is different. Every minute of ours is so million, thousands and millions of dollars. You know, we are a financial company, the global level, and you are wasting our time. But he would say, nothing going. And US in this kind of a thing, those countries are different. The guy who is in charge, he is in charge on that day or for that function. No one, if you to a VC, you a principal safety, chief safety, you can go to the other side. Over there, it is nothing doing. This guy is in charge. You say nothing doing. So they went on to the mill. And that is what helped them in really coming out. And they were somewhere in the 60th onwards, you know, kind of flows. It is not that they were second, third, fourth kind of flows. And that is how Time Magazine kindly look into it and there are a lot of lessons to be learned, you see. Therefore, based on that research, I want to talk to you and especially I'm so happy to see these students, you see. They have put up such a wonderful song. They came out with a theory of what is called disaster personality. And the research outcome is there are three ways in which people respond. First kind of pattern of response is those which they call personality, where people freeze. So once you are frozen, physically you freeze mentally and physically both, and therefore there is something happening, falling and you have frozen, you are only onlooker, then you will get hurt, you see. You can be killed also because you are not doing anything and violent things are happening. The second pattern of response is of those people who panic. That's the second disaster personality. And they panic so much that from their 10th, 15th, 30th floor, they will have, hold the hands of their partner, friends, and just jump. You may have seen sometimes some videos like that. You know, when Surat recently in the coaching center, fire took place, there also children we saw, you know, some jumping, some just slipping, etc. etc. But fortunately, the research says there is a third kind of pattern of response and the third personality, which is of those people who know what to do, which is what you have been doing, and who also know how to do this. Now, what to do is knowledge, knowing what to do, one, two, three. If there is, God forbid, earthquake at this time, I'm sure children would know. I'm not sure about the elders. What to do, you see. Duck cover the world, you see. And then go ahead, you know, gradually, you see. If there is fire, then the same thing changes to duck cover the roll, see, kind of. Because when you roll, the smoke goes up and you are safe. If you are running, standing, then you, get, you can get choked, you see. So this, this thing gives, I am sure, for the children especially and all others, I'm sure you are, you know which personality, which disaster personality you want to be. One, two or three. 
Normally one says I want to be number one in everything, but in this it is number three which is the best. You must know what to do and the second thing is how to do. How to do is practice it. How to do is rehearsal. How to do is mock drills. And that is the importance of doing it, you know, in the schools, in the society, in the malls, everywhere you see this must be done. Because only knowing what to do and not converting into action, you see, appropriate action, can again leave, leave you at the time of a, you know, crisis, sort of maybe confused. You see. But if your body is trained to respond to it, then you are safe. And let me tell you, there are, there are uh, case studies of school children. When Nepal earthquake took place, I think there is a girl, Smita, uh, Sneha, Sneha Gupta. Uh, and then there is the uh, case study of a British girl uh, during tsunami 2004 December, Terry Smith, you see. But I am not getting into details of that because you can access these stories, real life stories from Google Baba, you see. Now friends, you see, we are going to talk of urban scenario. And what I have told you about Patna and New York, that they are all urban scenarios. But the urban scenarios are not that simple. Urban scenario, especially relating to disaster, has become far too complex today than a disaster happening in the rural area, you see. There are all, all kinds of things which are there, you see. Apart from the climate change and the effects of climate change, all kinds of wastes are there. All kinds of solid waste, e-waste, medical waste, whatever you think, all that is there. I'm so very happy that now the country has taken up the resort to free itself of single-use plastics and things like that, you see. But the urban scenario, whether it is flash flood, floods or otherwise floods, I mean, in, in uh, when I was a probationer, Patna faced floods. That was 1975. Then recently, Chennai, Srinagar. I mean, you talk of down south, you talk of north up. Everywhere you have uh, you have floods and and all the other disasters. You see. Now, a look at disaster management act in this context is very very important. I'm happy it's been mentioned. But one thing which I especially like to tell everyone: can you take a look at the definition of disaster? as it is given in this act. We all remember the NDMA, STMA, DDMA, they are very important. There, there is no doubt. But what is at the center of the whole thing is the definition of disasters. Because now every state authority and anyone else who is involved in it is bound legally because it is a law of the land by the definition. And this is one of the most challenging and open-ended definitions. Let me just briefly explain to you, it says any uh, catastrophe or mishap or grave occurrence happening due to natural causes, happening due to man-made reasons, happening due to accident or negligence. What is left? Natural causes, man-made reasons, accident, negligence. They are so generic. And next sentence completes, you know, if something is left about environment, it says oil and all those activities which are adverse to environment. So one of the most challenging definitions I have seen. And when way back in, uh, before the act, High Power Committee had done some identification and listed in five categories, what in climate related, then geological disasters, then NBC, nuclear biological chemical, then accident related disasters, and epidemic related disasters, that listing contained as many as 34 disasters, just imagine. And now we are almost touching 40 because heat wave wasn't there then, cold wave wasn't there then, crowd management, what we see in Kumbh Mela, all things like that happening all over India, they were not there, you see. Lightning has emerged now as one of the major big killers, you see, kind of. Therefore, it's very important to understand the implications of the Disaster Management Act about the other thing. Now, friends, as I mentioned to you, two things kill you. Talk of urban, let us talk of urban, earthquake, you know, which is the context. Two things kill you. One is unsafe buildings. Buildings kill, but not all buildings kill. It is the unsafe buildings that kill. That's why there is a saying, earthquakes do not kill, it is the buildings that kill, but that's a bit simplistic. 
Not all buildings kill. It is only the unsafe buildings that kill. You know? And <coughs> the second killing can be what I explained to you that if your response is not approved, then you can kill yourself or you can get killed. Either you panic and kill yourself or you can get killed, you know, because you just don't know what to do. You know? So that is, it's very important to understand this. And I'm happy that as far as the loss of human lives are concerned, that India has done tremendous work. Odisha is a great example, and many other states are now really prepared. You know. Now the next focus has to be on resilient infrastructure because Odisha, Fani cyclone, we have seen that while, and Fani and before that, filing, etc., we have seen how tremendous has been the response. You know. People all over the world, countries and UN agencies, they have wondered, you see, as to how can you evacuate one million or one and a half million people to safe places in a limited time of 60 hours or something like that. Because cyclone gives you maximum 72 hours. You know, once the, this thing starts getting formed. Now, one of the things in the urban context which I like to uh, you know, mention, and that's very important, and that's a contribution of uh, one great ambassador of disaster management in the country whom we lost recently, that is Professor Anand Sarupare. He was a member of the Naval Authority. And National Building Code, as all of you would know, I'm sure you know, is, is there. It has earthquake safety building, report, you know, all, all the specifications are there. But the National Building Code is advisory in nature. It's a code, it's not a law. What Professor Arya did by way of innovation, that he incorporated the relevant portions for safe construction into the building bylaws of the car, which were adopted by the assembly and became a law in 2014. Now that I am mentioning because if it has been done here, it's great. If it has not been done, it can be done. Because building bylaws are law. And therefore they are mandatory. So what is advisory at the national level has become mandatory at the state level. And therefore now no building can be constructed, you know, unless until it conforms to all those specifications. But that doesn't complete the whole story. You, see. you can have laws and yet laws are not implemented. So therefore, I would say, I will come back, come to, just make a short reference to SFPR, Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. I am happy that at least Sendai Framework, I have been associated from literally IDMBR days. And in uh, Second World Conference, I was in Kobe, worked for Government of Japan, in this Yoko Framework for Action, which was mentioned. But for the first time, Sendai Framework puts premium on understanding risk, which is the first priority. Because my understanding is that if I do not know about the risk which is behind me or behind you, can you take any action to prevent it or mitigate it? It's behind you, you just can't, you don't have, you don't have years of the back. But if, of course I am James Bond, you see. I give the example that if someone is holding a gun, behind me. Uh, what do I do? I don't know. But if I am James Bond, I would have alert system here, there, somewhere, there, and quickly take action and either prevent it or mitigate it. And therefore, it's very important for you, everyone, and the community, and each member of the community, what Professor Sharma said, each member of the community to know what is the risk around, what are the hazards around us, which can convert into disasters. Madam also mentioned, you know, about hazard converting into, into disasters. So I think that is very, very important. And you have to do many things for that. In Bihar, we started uh, observing safety weeks, starting with earthquake safety week. You know, we, we thought one day is not enough. First, you know, we, we were confused by this whole UN day, you know, which comes on 13th of October. So there is one day. And we are talking of 34 disasters to 40 disasters. How can you sensitize or give people you know, messages on so many disasters? So we said, no, for each disaster, let's have some indic dedicated kind of mechanism. So we came to the idea of week because Bihar is a big state, 38 districts. 
10, 11 crore of population. So we have earthquake safety day starting on the same day when the 34th earthquake took place, which was mentioned. We have fire safety week, which was observed nationally, but we have enlarged, you see. Then we have road safety week, again observed nationally from before, but we have really enlarged because road accidents have become a big killer, one of the biggest killers. Then flood safety week, and finally we started, you know, a school safety fortnight. It has been mentioned, Dr. Sharma mentioned about, I am very happy to know the great work which is being done. But what we are doing is, first fortnight of July is Mukhyamantri, under this Mukhyamantri School Suraksha Program. You see, the whole uh, fortnight, first fortnight of July is school safety. And later on, another innovation was that it did not become only annual activity. So every Saturday is observed as safe Saturday. So there is some activity every Saturday, so that it remains on the agenda and mind of the, of the children. So you start with earthquake, then you start with fire. So today if you go to, and what Professor Sharma said we have done, and uh, we enlarged from the National School Safety Program of NDMA, which was a great initiative, and which is what enabled us, we have all the schools covered in all districts. So, and including private, because when I took the whole proposal to the Chief Minister, Mr. Nitesh Kumar, he said, why are you leaving private schools? I said, sir, you have said what I am feeling here. Because otherwise in a government program, I didn't know whether I can put private schools. So now we have practically more than 100,000 schools, government and private, 73,000 government schools and other private schools, all observing this. this. And I think this is going to change the scenario, that's what I believe. Uh, and friends, I, I just close. You see, mainstreaming, of course, maybe I'll talk about it in the later session, you know. Uh, but let me end by two mantras which I like to share with you. And these two mantras are in the form of slogans. Very short, sharp, you see. First is, Aapda nahi ho bhari yadi puri ho tekar. Aapda aapko bhari nahi padegi agar aapke tayyari puri. Which is what many cases, phony or filing etc. etc. we have seen. But the second, the other side of the coin is, ki tayyari nahi hai to aapko bhari padegi. Which is what has happened in some other cases. I don't want to name people can feel that some mistake is indirectly being criticized. But there are disasters where we have not been prepared at all, you see. You know, Kerala was not prepared for the 2018 floods, and they really faced it. You know. And the second mantra is, Vikas aisa ho jo aafat se bachaya. This is about development process. Vikas aisa ho jo aafat se bachaya, or Vikas aisa ho jo aafat na ban jaya. Agar ye vikas hai, or abhi shaking hoti hai, then this very building will save us, let me tell you, it can get damaged. You say, I will get damaged but save you. But when children died in Bhuj earthquake, about 1200 children in Bhuj, they died because school buildings fell on them. Because school buildings, walls fell on them. The district hospital sat down killing 179 people. Do you create a district hospital only to kill its own patients? No, never. No development. What to talk of sustainable development can, can you know, proceed like this. You can't have schools killing children, you can't have hospitals killing patients. So therefore, friends, I leave with this. is about preparedness, is about response. And Vikas has offered se bachaye. Avikas as how the Apatna Banja is about the developmental process, which is what will take us to. And the build back better is also included in that. But thank you very much to all of you, Government of Sikkim, Professor Vika Shadma, sir, for inviting me and giving me time to share my thoughts. I am really privileged and honored. Thanks.
Honorable Minister Land Revenue and Disaster Management, uh, Shri Kunga Nirmaditya, uh, Member NDMA, Jepa Marwa, Dignitaries present of the Dais and the Catherine, August Catherine. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is uh, indeed a privilege for me to be here and uh, not just get the chance to address all of you, but to learn about all the great things which have happened in the space of Sikkim in disaster management since 2011. The last time I visited here was uh, part of the Government of India delegation immediately after the earthquake. And uh, since then, and when I came here yesterday, when I interacted with the people, uh, tried to find out what all has happened. What all has happened since then. So it has been uh, very gratifying to see the tremendous progress more made over here under the able leadership of uh, Professor uh, Vinod Sharma and the rest of the colleagues and the state government. Uh, in terms of uh, really taking very solid steps to mainstream disaster risk management and uh, to really make sure that all organizations of the government as well as outside the government give primacy to uh, safety from disaster in their day-to-day -day functions. And uh, this is actually something which in Maharashtra we are yet to fully learn. So uh, uh, as a member of the Maharashtra State Disaster Management Authority, I think this is a lesson I'm going to take back to our Chief Minister that we also need to learn something from Sikkim and see how this entire uh, initiative has been has been brought to the people and uh, so we can also try to replicate the kind of efforts you have made and I'm sure that there would be important lessons by which we can improve. Uh, what uh, I want to uh, present today is uh, some of the, uh, no this is the other presentation, this is the other file. Uh, bit, um, about the uh, challenges and exactly where we are, where we are going and also to give uh, uh, some of my perspective regarding where the big challenges lie. So uh, obviously, uh, uh, so I'm going to fo focus mainly on the urban disaster risk. Uh, we all know and we all experience that uh, India is very, very rapidly urbanizing. And uh, right now we have about 34% of our population which is urban. And uh, it was much less a decade ago, even much lower than that in the previous decade. And most of the increase in our urban population, and this is important from disaster management point of view, most of the increase in urban population is coming because of migration from rural areas. And uh, quite obviously, most of the people who are migrating from rural areas are the people who are not that well off economically. So what happens is that uh, if I look at the per capita capacity to absorb shocks, uh, every year in the urban area it is less than the previous year. So when we talk about disaster management, actually we are talking about every year a larger and larger pool of people who are less capable than the previous year. So disaster management investment in terms of the time, the effort, the attention which is paid as well as the resources which are going to be devoted is actually geared or should be geared towards helping these large number of people coming in every year who are somehow struggling just to make a living. And that is a fundamental difference between urban disaster management approach as required compared to everything else which we do in the government. So this is the only place where by investing more, we are not becoming better. As we invest more, we need to invest even more because the problem is becoming bigger. Because more number of poor people are there in the urban areas. So in the northeastern states, we have a similar, a similar situation that uh, the urbanization is very, very rapid. And uh, basically what happens is that there is also this transient urbanization a lot of people come to the urban areas because of the work in the government offices, because the courts are here, the hospitals are here, the schools, colleges, universities are here. They are in the urban areas. So there is also this transient urbanization over and above the permanent urbanization of the relatively less well off people. And when the disaster occurs, what it implies is that there are a large number of people who are away from their homes. So first of all, they are not rooted to the place where they are stuck in disaster. 
And secondly, they are worried about and they are trying to take care of other family members who are away from the place with their strength. So there is an effort and there is a tendency that they need to reach back to their base and try to help them. And that also causes to the stress and that also causes to the disruption which happens in the general disaster in the hill states like the Northeast. So disaster management also has to have this dimension in the part of our planning process. So this is for example is one of the, uh, the recent pictures of Gantok. And if you see it, obviously it's a very, very beautiful place and that is the reason why it is such a major tourist attraction. But the key thing is to see the very, very uh, steep hill slopes. And obviously the roads are long winded and if the hill slopes are very steep, then, then there is a danger that the slopes themselves may become unstable in disasters because of cloudburst or because of earthquakes and so on. So there is a cascading a natural locational disadvantage which comes in the hill states then uh, in terms of tackling and disaster management, which are not likely to occur if you are talking about disaster management in Bihar, Uttar Pradesh or elsewhere. So unfortunately this is the added, added factor of uh, dislocation which increases the severity of disaster compared to the states in the rest of the country. So uh, some, of the, some of the characteristics that we see of urban growth which we have been uh, seeing is that uh, first of all uh, uh, the towns have master plans including Gantok, have master plans, have development control rules and regulations, have bylaws that govern the growth. The, the master plans I mean, they can be an instru uh, important instrument if they are done properly. Um, urban growth profile of the Indian towns actually are quite different from master plan and that is where one of the problems comes. Master plans uh, are uh, imagining something and the way the cities are developing are often not matching with them. And some of the key features are that, uh, that urbanization uh, is causing land use uh, regulations not to be followed. Then we have slums or unauthorized constructions in large numbers. Then uh, no development zones, for example, unstable hill slopes also get constructed upon. And uh, the infrastructure development in terms of roads, uh, water supply, sewage and other things are not catching up or not keeping pace with the growth in population and the locations where the population are growing. So all of these provide ideal conditions for the disasters to become much more severe than what they would otherwise have been. So uh, this, for example, is a, a recent photo from of Aizwal. And uh, what I just want you to see is the fact that there is no slope, there is no slope, there is no area which is not populated. And you know much better than me that you go to any hill, hilly area, there would be zones which are safe, there are zones which are unsafe. Every hill has both safe and unsafe zones. So it's impossible to find hills where you can have construction everywhere because obviously the only way it can happen is if, unso uh, uh, if the unsafe slopes also get built upon. And these are the, the things which uh, one need to avoid uh, if we are uh, becoming more and more cautious and sensitive about uh, ensuring that in future disasters our uh, losses are reduced. So, now, uh, now this is something which I don't have to tell you that uh, the primary causes of uh, disasters uh, over here could be both man-made as well as natural. I will talk more about natural over here in the next few minutes which I have. And uh, the key uh, natural disasters of concern or natural hazards of concern are earthquakes and landslides and floods. And particularly earthquakes are the main ones from the human casualty point of view. Floods are causing a lot of uh, losses, but human casualties in floods have been substantially contained over the decades. But in earthquakes, we are still not able to reduce that. And what happens? So uh, in the entire Northeast, uh, including Sikkim, we are located in what is known as seismic zone 5, which is the highest earthquake zone in the country. So this is the area where the largest earthquakes are likely to occur, the most damaging earthquakes are likely to occur. And over the last uh, century and a half, I have just listed the earthquakes which have affected Sikkim badly. 
And you can see every few decades there is a visitation of a very strong earthquake which would have caused large scale devastation. And there is no reason to believe that this particular trend is not going to continue in the future. See, if we are looking at the 2011 earthquake as a benchmark of what to do, then maybe we are underselling and underpreparing ourselves because we have experienced much, much stronger earthquakes in the past and there is no scientific reason to tell that that cannot happen again in the future. So, uh, our, so, so if we put, try to put all these things together, our earthquakes which are likely to occur are much larger than what we have seen in our living memory. At the same time, our, our urban development is increasing drastically because of the uh, because of the rapid increase in population. Most of the people contributing to the increase in population are relatively poor. Our urban development is not able to comply with the uh, intentions of the master plan because of a variety of reasons. So the only way out is to factor them as information for our disaster management plan. So disaster management plan, if it understands and recognizes these factors, then it would be able to produce the uh, measures which are required to tackle their consequences in a more adequate fashion. In, in the specifically when we look at the buildings, what we are finding is that whether your buildings are concrete or steel or brick or any other material, we have national standards which specify how they have to be constructed. And if the national standards are followed, then all those buildings are going to, to have safety against earthquakes and against floods and other things. Unfortunately, the level of compliance has been poor. And uh, over the last uh, half a decade or so, there has been a lot of effort to build capacity in Sikkim of the technical professionals, the engineers and the architects to improve their practices. And this would have a long-term effect in reducing the vulnerability of the buildings and because of that to reduce the losses which will come in future earthquakes. And that, and that is a kind of measure which has to be strengthened. Those are the efforts which are going to bring a lot of long-term benefit. So, uh, as I mentioned that the compliance with IS code is generally not very good so far in what we have observed. But compared to 2011 when I saw the buildings uh, yesterday, uh, even when we were driving by, I could make out that there are a lot of those telltale uh, signs, the so-called telltale features which are now in the buildings which were being constructed compared to them not being there in the buildings a decade ago. So obviously there is on the ground change, a very organic, a very uh, you can say a down to earth kind of change happening which is already making all of us who are currently in, uh, in the act of safer compared to when we were here in 2011. So that's a positive factor, but then that has to be increased uh, drastically, that has to be made much more widespread and that would be one of the factors to, uh, to take into account in disaster management. So in terms of the priorities, uh, I have just listed out some of the, uh, the pre-disaster pri priorities, these are not all of the priorities. So one is that there has to be a more realistic knowledge of hazards, uh, the really big disasters occur with sufficiently long interval that the human memory is not able to carry it. So, uh, so, so historical information, knowledge of historical events uh, should be a, an important guiding factor and not just what we are able to remember in our own personal memory. So the so-called community memory should be the guiding factor and not personal memory. That is a very, very important fact and this is something which is globally recognized as a very weak spot, particularly in communities which have recently experienced a large disaster. So because the large disaster was beyond their coping capacity, people start believing that that is the limit of what they have to prepare for. Because as it is, it was beyond their coping capacity and often they are found that they were way short when the real much bigger thing happens and it happens inevitably. Second is the knowledge of vulnerability, our built environment, the location where we are, the kind of facilities we have, where, which we have. What is this resilience to the disasters which are going to occur in future? We need to understand them. If they are adequate, we have to feel good about it as well as factor that in. 
If they are not adequate, we have to recognize what are the consequences of that weakness and factor that in. And then that has to be a, again a part of our pre-disaster priority. Then the knowledge of risk, we have the hazard information, we have the vulnerability information. Combine it, we need to get the impact information. Who gets the impacted? So uh, I'll just give a simple example. In, uh, in 1997, in Madhya Pradesh, in the city of Jabalpur, there was a small earthquake, magnitude 5.5 earthquake. So not a large earthquake. And uh, there was not so much of a damage compared to what you have experienced from many other parts of the country have experienced since then. But the key point uh, was that one of the buildings which got affected was a colonial building where the district collector lived. And he and his family had a very, very narrow escape in the sense that there were these large chunks of stone from the roof which fell and they fell a few centimeters away from where they were. So it's a really probable escape. And so that was good. Now, one of the things which, hap which happened is that in the family, there was a nervous breakdown because of the shock of what they had just experienced. And you also know that the district collector or the, or the deputy commissioner in this case is the disaster manager for the, for the district. So there are so many legal and administrative responsibilities which are tied to the signature of the deputy commissioner. And at the time when the person is grappling with a personal tragedy and having to deal with the tragedy of the district as a whole, there is no uh, simple balance on how to do these all together. And what has happened in that case and what we have experienced or we have observed in most of the cases is that it results in a, in a much greater degradation of the management capacity compared to the situation where the, there would have been no paralysis in that particular designation. In the case of Jawapur, of course, the next day somebody else was airlifted and brought in and was made as the active lift, active lift collector to get those functions started. Often it is not possible to do that at such short notice and quite often what happens is that it shows that we had an understanding that we have to do this, this, this and we also designated the people to do who were equipped to do those things because they had the capability and the training to do it. But there are circumstances which incapacitated them and because of incapacitation of a very important person or very important uh, responsibility in a chain, the entire chain broke. Fortunately, in that case, it was magnitude 5.5 earthquake, not large earthquake at all. The consequences were also much, much more in control. But imagine if this kind of thing happened when there is a larger earthquake or a larger disaster of some other kind. What is it that can be done? The state needs to also keep these things in mind. In Maharashtra, we have become very cautious about that. Uh, that uh, how do we have a full redundancy uh, of responsibility from the point of view of legal and administrative delegation of powers. And uh, that is again something which has to be kept in mind in Sikkim because you are much more likely to have a large disruptive event than we are likely to do in Maharashtra. So in post-disaster situation, the priorities have to be slightly different. The most important priority in post-disaster situation is to have an understanding of what happened. So no amount of uh, preparedness and planning of how to respond to a disaster will prepare us to tackle a real disaster because every disaster is different. Every disaster brings situation which were not simulated or imagined when the plans were being prepared. So what happened is the most critical part to understand in disaster management after a disaster has occurred. And uh, this is something where the governments in India and in all the democratic countries of the world are particularly poorly equipped. We, we work, in the government, we work by rules, 
we work by precedences. We work by looking into how things have been done earlier. So the capacity to change on the basis of incoming information, which is a real-time basis, maybe with individuals, but in a democratic system, it is never there automatically with the system. So disaster management system has to be created with this kind of adaptation flexibility, which is not there in the rest of the government system. And it is not just words that you have to do it. It means that the people who are manning those positions, they have to be temperamentally and psychologically ready to do it. So if people are being transferred in and out of disaster management positions at very frequent intervals, it would be very challenging to build that capacity within the disaster management organizations, for example. Secondly, if people are very rule-bound or precedence-bound, then they cannot simply sit on a new position and change. The personal orientation requires efforts through personal training and other, other cases, uh, otherwise. And these also have to be a part of our disaster management planning. And what happened has to be updated as and when information comes. Our experience shows that after a disaster, a large fraction of the information which flows in is either duplicate information or false information. So there is a very small fraction of the information which is actually real information and ordinarily there is no way to differentiate the false information from the real information. So it involves a whole system, a process to be set up to do that. And one of the things which you can do is to have organizations or to have individuals with the right ability to help you guide that. And in the case of Sikkim itself, I will give you one example of what happened. So in the 2011 earthquake, as you know, the earthquake occurred at 6.11 p.m. It was in the evening. And, uh, and actually, we learned of it because around 6.15, uh, the television started flashing information that shaking has been experienced in Calcutta. So that was the first information that some sort of earthquake has occurred. That in the t television studio of these news channels in Calcutta, they felt the shaking and they showed the shaking of the camera. Then the information came that the shaking has, a, has been experienced in entire West Bengal, then in Bihar, in UP, in Assam, in Sikkim. Everywhere the information came that shaking has occurred. So obviously when shaking has occurred over so many hundreds of kilometers, it is a strong earthquake. Then USGS, about half an hour later, the United States Geological Survey, they first flashed that based on their global observatory, they, uh, they have recorded a 6.8 earthquake and they gave a location which was on the Nepal-Sikkim border, but in Sikkim. Then about an hour or so later, the India Metrological Department, they also gave out their uh, earthquake data and they said that a 6.8 earthquake has occurred. They gave a different, a different epicenter which was in Nepal but close to the border of Sikkim. So we have two information which says that it was 6.8, so you can assume that it was around that size earthquake with two epicenters which are not very far from one another. One was in Nepal, one was in Sikkim. So that is all the information which we had. Uh, then, the, then what happened was that uh, we got information from the Ministry of Home Affairs in Delhi and also from NDMA saying that uh, of, that they have reached to Sikkim based on the information that the earthquake is in Sikkim. Uh, but there is no information on the ground information because all communication links are broken. Then it seems that uh, roads are disrupted because there are large number of landslides which have been reported. So roads don't seem to be functional. And because of that, on ground information is not available at all. And also the information which we later on gathered was that many people in the affected communities reached the roadheads. And after they reached the roadheads, they were able to inform the information of what had happened in their valley. And that formed the basis of deciding what kind of rescue efforts to be taken over there. So they were all very, very good steps to be taken. None of them would be considered wrong or improper or non-optimal. They are all the right things to be done. The key point is that the, these steps which have been taken, how did it compare with what was actually required? And good disaster management plan is right from very beginning, you are having a response setup which is proportionate to the size of the disaster which has occurred.
Then on October 19, which was a Sunday, so around 12 o'clock, the NDMA vice chairman called us and said that uh, in spite of the best of efforts, it has not been possible to compile information about what is the on the ground situation because uh, the entire uh, airspace was inaccessible because of very thick low clouds and a lot of rains which were happening. And because of that reason, it was not certain if whatever efforts are being taken are, uh, are proportionate to the size of the problem and also whether these steps are being taken to go to the places where the disasters are likely to be most severe. So, th so he asked us saying that can we try to uh, assess through uh, simulations and uh, through scientific uh, assessment of exactly what could have happened and what would have been the hotspot area, the areas where the government has to pay the most attention. And uh, the information of course was that the epicenter is on the Sikkim-Nepal border and uh, in earthquake you know that the damage is expected to be most concentrated close to the epicenter. So the government was geared over here also that through the river valleys to move in that direction towards the Nepal border and those would be the areas where most of the affected people are likely to be found. Then we did, we started our simulation based on all the information which we had including the geological information, geotechnical information, uh, the, the, the seismotechnic information, the previous earthquake records, then the population information and so on. And we gave our report at 6 p.m on 19 to NDMA. NDMA processed it. They immediately uh, uh, forwarded this report to the Ministry of Home Affairs as well as to the state government. The key point which we found was that the area of maximum damage, the so-called hotspots, are actually away from the epicenter. And in the case of Sikkim, it was more stark because it meant that it was on a different river valley. So if you are going on the river valley, if you are following the road towards where the epicenter was, it is not that your hotspot is going to be somewhere on the way there or somewhere beyond the epicenter. You have to come all the way to the plains and then take another river valley to go to the areas where the maximum damage has occurred. And incidentally, the two uh, people who helped, the two people who actually played the most key role to, uh, to carry out this simulation, so Mahendra Meena and Rohan Shinde, both of them are here in this hall. And uh, I think if they can stand up, uh, I, I think we have to appreciate, show our appreciation. So they are out, outstanding engineers with uh, very deep knowledge on earthquake disasters. And they carried out the simulation to really identify where the damage was. was. And this is what we had sent to, uh, sent to NDMA, which was then later on sent to the state government. There is a star which shows where the epicenter was. And the darker color shows where the maximum uh, effect of shaking would be there. And one of the things which we flagged, which was not moved to the government hotspot when it came to the earthquake disaster, the damage concentration is likely to be in and around Mangalore more than any other place. And that was something which we were told later on was not imagined by the government at that time. Because the road over there was cut off and there was no really uh, credible way of going and getting information from there. Of course, later on, the tunnel which was under construction for the Tisa uh, project, so that tunnel became the road to go to that valley. And then that is a kind of uh, critical role uh, having knowledge about what happened can play. So that is why in a post-disaster situation, when you plan your disaster management plan, please look into how you can get information from various sources, how you can assimilate them, and how you can update your decision making on that basis. So, uh, to quickly summarize, what I would like to again reiterate is that the Northeast is rap rapidly urbanizing and it is resulting in a drastic increase in the, in the risk of disaster. And uh, disaster management needs to be mainstreamed in all the functions. It is not that it is a specialized job of some organization, some department, and they alone are thinking about disaster management. I mean, each organization has to work to ensure that their responsibility is not increasing the risk, but it is decreasing the risk. And uh, also, both reduction of the disaster risk and improvement of response systems or response capacity have to be the priority, at least for the next couple of decades. And uh, availability of the what happened information should be the guiding principle in planning the disaster management systems in the state. So, thank you so much.
for land revenue and disaster management, dignitaries on the dais, senior government officials, dear children, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a matter of great pleasure for me to be amidst you all. As has been mentioned that uh, during my long service career, bulk of it was spent in the northeastern states and the balance of it was in two coveted appointments from military operations where I was responsible to look after the northeastern states and the China border. Besides, of course, the balance was it in the other hill states of JNK, Himachal and Uttarakhand. So I feel emotionally attached and that is the reason from the NDMA, I always make it a point to support the initiatives of the northeastern states and also project them for the good work that they are doing. I have been proponent of sharing of the best practices and let me be very candid about it that at every forum when we have our annual formation day on 27th of September in Delhi, we give a platform to the states to share their best practices and there is a lot that we get to learn from each other. And let me tell you that today again, you all would have uh, heard Madam Ambika talk about what has been done by the SDMA in the recent past. And we had a beautiful documentary which has showcased the good work done by the state government. And likewise, the Vice Chairman, Professor Sharma, has also talked about various initiatives of the state government. And believe you me, we from NDMA find it very heartening indeed to see that such good initiatives have been taken by the state. And that is how when we looking from NDMA and the various states, Sikkim <coughs> definitely stands out as one of the model states. I am very honest in saying so, not because today I am in gang talk, but those of the state government officials who have been coming to NDMA, they know that we have been talking the same language even in Delhi to say in front of all other states that yes, you have a very robust a framework which has been constituted, strengthened over the years and I think the credit goes to the dynamic political leadership and of course the able support of the uh, this, uh, State uh, Revenue Commissioner, come Secretary and her team who have proved to be very dynamic in every bit of it in terms of the execution of various initiatives and of course the support provided by the Vice Chairman. So my compliments to each one of them for the good work being done. So I do not wish to highlight as to what all has been done but two things which I would definitely like to make a mention is the type of emphasis which has been given on the capacity building and learning in the state is something which needs to be built upon and this is what each and every one needs to learn that it is the community which becomes the first responder in any kind of a disaster and it is they who have to understand, they who have to prepare themselves and they are the ones who have to respond. So the type of initiatives which the state government has taken down to the village level, down to the community and the ward level in the urban areas, reaching out to the students in the schools and the hospitals and volunteerism at every stage is what is absolutely an outstanding example of bringing about the preparedness and enhancing the disaster resilience of the state. I would also like to make a mention over here very briefly about some of the initiatives which NDMA is taking which are relevant and of interest to everyone over here. I was happy that we talked about you know the vulnerability of the state being in seismic zone 4 and 5 for earthquake and so also landslide besides various other type of disasters. In the field of earthquake we have just concluded uh, an earthquake risk, uh, uh, disaster risk index of various 50 towns which are in seismic zone 4 and 5. Sikkim was included in that, I mean Gangkok was included in that. 
and that report has been prepared and is going to be released on 27 September at our Commission Day in Delhi, which will enable the state government to prioritize on their mitigation effort and the retrofitting and various other things which need to be done in the field of uh, earthquake risk mitigation. We have also conceived a comprehensive national earthquake risk mitigation program being funded by World Bank. So the project is in the final stages of its uh, being finalized and the northeastern states are being included in that. So we will have a lot of effort towards the earthquake risk mitigation. With regard to the landslide which is one of the major problems which are being faced by the state government as was mentioned and also I was uh, very happy to acknowledge that it was mentioned even in the documentary film, the support which we have provided for the landslide risk mitigation scheme at Mangar. I would request the state government to prepare some more DPRs and send to us and we will definitely support because I am aware that the number of landslides which are there in various places are far too many. The state needs to prioritize and send us some more DPRs. On the NDMA, we have undertaken certain programs to enhance the capacity of the states to prepare their DPRs and the professionals from the state have attended various workshops. I have interacted with them both at IIT Mandi, at uh, CRRI and also some of them went for the recent one at IIC and there is another workshop which is being undertaken at Mandi. So we will continue to assist the state government so that they prepare their DPRs and we'll definitely try to fund those uh, projects so that this problem is uh, resolved to whatever extent is possible. I was also happy that Amrita University has established uh, the early warning uh, system in the state <coughs> as an experiment basis and the results are very encouraging. Concurrently, NDMA has uh, also started a project which is being undertaken by IIT Mandi to develop a low cost early warning system for landslide. I have personally gone and uh, visited them and seen this and the feedback has been very encouraging. The state of Himachal and Uttarakhand are uh, emulating in a big number and so also the other states and I am sure the project as and when it is getting completed in another 6 to 7 months, the state will be able to benefit to have larger number of low cost early warning systems for various landslide sites. Why I am talking more about the landslide is because we at NDMA constituted a national level task force which I was heading for the landslide risk mitigation and uh, we had the top most experts in the field of landslide working with us for over two years and I am happy to say that we have finalized our strategy the strategy document is also going to be released on 27th of September, which gives out various important facets of the landslide risk mitigation. So, without waiting for the strategy document to get completed, we concurrently started taking this initiative of developing the early warning system. Concurrently, another program which is being undertaken in Uttarakhand for preparing the large scale maps of the landslide prone areas. And the third important step which we have taken is to establish a center for landslide risk mitigation and it is again in the advanced stages of uh, getting approved by the Ministry of Finance and going to be established soon. And uh, the next initiative uh, is with this uh, Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. The SDC people have been working with the state government in uh, block area uh, resolution and mitigation problem. So we are working with them. So based on the experience that they have gained in Sikkim, we are going to develop the guidelines on the mitigation for cloth. As was mentioned that there are a large number of eight to nine big uh, uh, glacier prone uh, lakes which need to be addressed. So this is going to, this document is going to help us in addressing this to the mitigation process to the effort of the experts from Switzerland. And uh, with regard to the very successful program of uh, school safety, we and seeing the good initiative of Bihar and certain, some of the other states, we have decided at NDMA to have a pan India launch of the national school safety program so that it goes across to all the schools in the country. And uh, the last part I would like to say is that uh, we are also working on uh, 
Extending this Abda Mitra scheme, which has got very good feedback from the environment, the volunteers training and supporting them. This also we are planning to pan it out at a larger scale. With the end, I would like to compliment the state government that I cannot think of a better way to designate 18 September to commemorate not the losses that we suffered on this day, but also to rededicate ourselves to work towards improving our capacity and to improve the disaster resilience of the state. And I wish the state to continue on their initiatives and good effort and want to pray Almighty to bring happiness, cheer and ensure well-being of the people of the city. My best wishes to you all. Good afternoon to all my friends who have gathered here to observe state disaster risk reduction day. On this auspicious occasion, we have with us Honorable Speaker, Second District Assembly, Suyen Vidas. We also have with us Honorable Minister for Forest, Environment, Mines and Geology, Sri Kanulaji. Retired Deputy General Elise Marwa, Guest of Honor, National Disaster Management Member. Sir so Anil Sena, former Vice Chairman, Bihar State Disaster Management Authority. <laughs> Professor VK Sharma, Vice Chairman, Sikkim State Disaster Management Authority. <laughs> Professor Ravi Sena, Senior Professor, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. We also have with us honorable uh, members from Renner Constituency and uh, Namsevon Constituency. We have just left for some other important assignment at the uh, Greenfield Airport in Patron. We have with us Janta Municipal Corporation uh, Chairman, Amal Jilla Adyakshas, Rupa Adyakshas, Editor Chief Secretaries, Principal Secretaries, Head of Departments, Department, uh, department. <coughs> members from NDMC, SRDF, NDRL, distinguished guests. We have with us today so many experts on disaster management who have given their uh, valuable information about disaster management, how the disasters take place, how to counter these disasters. I have had the opportunity of being a part of disaster management in the past, when uh, in 2003, after my voluntary retirement, I was with the State Treasury Officer for Disaster Management, UNDP, under UNDP, where I was there for two months, Within these two months' time, I can somewhat a little bit of knowledge about disaster management also, and I also had the opportunity to go to Bhuvaneshwar, uh, which is the hub of uh, the UNICEF disaster management after the 2001 super cyclone that is at Odisha and the coastal states. Otherwise, also. In 1997, there was a major disaster in and around Janto, whereby a number of lives were lost. Uh, huge damage was done to the properties of the people around here. That time I was opposed in the government department. I and a few of my friends, we took initiative on our own to start relief camps for the people who were victims of the landslides in and around Janto. Sikkim lies in the foothills of Eastern Himalayas. Due to its fragile geomorphic setting, it is multi-hazard prone state, severely affected by earthquake, landslides, forest fire, flash flood, and others. 
the impacts of climate change have resulted in exaggeration of climate-induced disasters like forest fire, glacial lake outburst flood growth, risks and landslides. Considering the importance and vulnerability of massive disasters in Himalayan states like states, the Sikkim Disaster Management Authority, SSDMA, in collaboration with National Disaster Authority, NDMA, has organized this two-day regional workshop on challenges of DRR in hill areas. The objective of the workshop is to bring all stakeholders, scientific, government, civil society, and communities together to strengthen the capacities of the state and regional authorities on climate-related disaster risk resilience. The aim is to come up with a set of actionable recommendations keeping science, policy, and institutional capacity, etc., to reduce impact of climate changes related disasters. The, the emerging issues and disaster risk governance which we need to stress on are, number one, disaster risk governance approaches should become more disaster risk reduction centric rather than response preparedness, rather than response and relief centric. The focus of risk governance should be at grassroots level. It should be more a bottom of, of approach where the voice of the marginalized should be heard. Many streaming, streaming DRR into planning process should be expedited, not as, as an added policy, but as a way of integration with the ongoing works. Uh, what we see is whatever projects we take, but particularly that, I, I can cite an example of road construction. Whenever we take up a road construction, what we have to see is that along with the road construction, proper drainage system has to be there. And also we have to see that the excavated material should not be done here and there. It should be done in a, in a proper regulated way. There are certain regulated areas where this excavated material is done. But uh, in 1997, the disaster, how did it occur is because there was a four-hour incessant rainfall, and the the the, the turbulent the water which were flowing through the drain were blocked by the debris which were dumped, and then water got diverted, and the diverted was the the Pathankshan site, and major damage was caused. They are losing almost 14 lives, and six seven houses was damaged badly. So. When we plan road construction, what we have to see is the system has to be there, expert materials have to be uh, done in in designated area. Uh, these are the, some of the main reasons why landslides take this. There are many examples of good development practices that can contribute to disaster risk reduction. Example, include poverty elevation programs that aim to diversify income generation. Good agricultural practice that is climate risk sensitive, or simply good building practices, mm, they should be encouraged. We have building bylaws also here. Unfortunately, people like us, the politicians, the ministers, the MLAs, are the main culprits who are responsible for breaking rules. We have rules here, building bylaws are there, which says that we cannot construct any building above four and a half stories. But we are blind to us that we go on constructing beyond that, and as a result of this, the load on the on the, on the otherwise unstable land is so much that it cannot resist the load, and then all the disaster take place, and that we can see 1997 again to develop area because of uh, because of this particular factor, major incident took place there. Following the 2011 Sikkim earthquake, the State Disaster Management Authority has been take an active role in preparedness. India's nationally determined contribution, NDC, to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change also reiterates the importance of linking disaster risk reduction, adaptation, and this emphasis on an urgent need to finance to undertake any activities for early warning system, disaster risk reduction, 
loss and damage that capacity building at all levels. The Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction in 2015 to 2013, the global blueprint group for disaster risk reduction offers a solution to saving the lives, livelihoods and assets globally and is in conformity with the 2013 Agenda for Sustainable Development and 2016 Paris Agreement on Climate Change. The Disaster Management Act 2005 was published by the government of India following it. The state republished the same in 2007. The state also published disaster, the State Disaster Management Rules 2007 and Disaster Management Policies for the State of Sydney in 2007. This is a written statement which was prepared for me. I would like to add a few more things on this. I totally agree with what uh, uh, Professor Sina said. Disaster doesn't happen if you are prepared. Disaster happens if you are not prepared. Development doesn't, development should be such that disaster doesn't occur. And development should not be such that disaster happens. In today's life, what we see is, we have today with us a number of representatives from nine departments. And I'm also happy to say that uh, all the departments which are present here, we are always one in countering disaster. But this is, whenever disaster occurs, we are one. I personally feel that in all our development projects also we have to be one. There has to be integrated approach of all the departments. For instance, like, as again I'll come back to the construction of road. When you plan for construction of road, other departments like uh, uh, Land Revenue Disaster Management Department, Forest Department, and many other departments have to get together to see one particular department is planning for one particular plan whether it is going to affect other departments, adverse effect with the other departments or not. If we put our heads together, if we work in an integrated manner, I think the expenditure which will be of that will also be reduced, besides reducing the risk of disaster. That has to be there. And the another thing is, as I already mentioned, we have a number of legislations on the reduction of risk, but these legislations have to be <coughs> implemented and enforced in such a way that everything becomes effective. For instance, like the state government in the past has issued uh, strong legislation that dumping of uh, garbage, dumping of materials in the drains are strictly prohibited. But what are the alternatives given? These have to be seen. When you pass an order for certain things, you also have to see alternatives are there. Without alternatives, it's not our it's not going to work. So my uh, the appeal to all the departments, including my own departments, that whatever legislation we have with us, this has to be implemented in the right of this. Sikkim, as you know, is a beautiful state with beautiful people, with its rich biodiversity. Uh, and is known for its hospitality, but we are a small state. We are just a small state with 7,096 square kilometers is our size. We are gradually losing large landmass because of landslides. We have to prevent. How we have to prevent? How how do we have to? How should we work to counter all these disasters? I'm happy that the efforts of the state government towards disaster risk management is being actively and very committedly supported by the government of India in various instances like UNDP, uh, UNICEF, uh, Indosis Development Corporation, NDA. I had the opportunity of attending some of the meetings just about two months back and here I found that the Agencies, we are, agencies I remember, 
ready to support us in our effort. And Sikkim has been made as a pilot state for where disaster management activities will be started. And I can assure everybody around here that Sikkim will definitely be a model state in so far as the risk management is concerned. Sikkim will be model state, Sikkim will be example for the rest of the country. <coughs> Let us all join our hands together to keep this beautiful state intact in every respect, particularly let us all work for saving our small state from all the disasters, particularly the landslide, flash floods, which are caused by the global warming, climate change. Recently, as you know, there was a banker sanctioned by the government of India to the all mountainous to scale all the uh, uh, mountains, including 24 mountains in Sikkim. But there was a resistance from the state government as well as different orders. Because we revere our mountains at the abode of the gods, our gods and deities. We miss our stupid. But the fact of the matter is that in that resistance, there's a scientific reason also. Because the mountaineers, when they go, when they, they go to the mountains, to escape the mountains, they take with, us, with them all kinds of uh, materials, which are dumped in the, uh, in the mountain region also, which are not coming from there, as a result of which. I was just seeing one uh, small video clip on Mount Everest. And I, there I saw, Mounds and mounds of uh, the non degradable garbage has been removed from there. Human defecation. That's why I say, when we resist anybody climbing our mountains, because we revere our mountains, we should not be sound to it. Let's just take it from, from the point of view of scientific reasons also, why we are resisting it. Therefore, once more, I'd like to exhort everybody present here to join hands with, with us, with the department, with the government department, the stakeholders are also the uh, general public. We all have to get together to see to it that this small state, this beautiful state, remain beautiful, remain peaceful, remain hospitable. Its biodiversity are protected, its water resources are conserved. Other day, the Chief Secretary of Sikkim was saying, who is the best conservator of water? And he was telling me that a barber is the best conservator of water because with a small cup of water, he can have so many heads, so many heads, <laughs> share the so many he can do so many. So that is the way. Let us also take an example from, example from the barber and try to conserve our resources. With these few words, I would like to uh, thank all the dictators who have come from Delhi, experts, and who have given their uh, given so much to enlighten them into the, uh, the various aspects of disaster uh, risk uh, management. And I would like, I'd like to wish them their happy stay in this state. And all the, the two-day program may, be, uh, may meet with uh, grand success. These few words, uh, I would like to take leave because immediately after this function, myself, my secretary, madam, We'll have to leave for the Yoksam, where the major disaster has stuck there. And this is, uh, again, it points out to today's program. So I was only, I was just discussing with my secretary if we could also take our experts to Yoksam. But it is not also right now. We will, uh, we'll manage to take them sometime later. We'd also like to see to it that the, our experts, including, some, uh, including our union ministers also, when they come to Sikkim, they should come by the road to see for themselves what is happening around us. With these few words, I wish you all the best and may you meet your success. Uh, with these few words, I would like to take you. Thank you very much.
पैला जो छिटो भरसा भर